Greetings and welcome to the Badger Caves West Wing, where our stealthy pole cats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss Slam Bam Badger style. Your sinuous hosts for this evening are myself, Supreme Doge in Charge, our pole cat punster Hannah, Dr. Random Cam, Panda at Large, Max Simpson's kin, not jaundiced, and our anchorilla Scott, who is currently not here, but he's on his way. He's just stuck in the line at Walmart, apparently. Should have gone with Amazon, Scott. And this evening, we'll be discovering and covering the following topics. This week, there was an attack in Ohio, in, on Ohio State University campus involving a Somali, a car, and a knife. But apparently, it's a gun control issue. Or toxic masculinity. Or Islamophobia. I don't know. We'll get into it. A fempathic woman defends men from the sin of mansplaining. What even is this year? Meme magic has given birth to Keck the god of destruction, and the media is clueless about what this means. Praise be upon him. <laughs> Movember is coming to an end, and as always, there is no shortage of feminist tears and SJW triggerings at the very thought of beards, 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 beards. A school now exists in Portland, Maine to help young millennials learn how to adult. No, really. That's happening. And finally our bonus story for the patron only after show an anonymous writer for the guardian talks about how the alt-right nearly turned him into a racist praise Keck. anyway if you want to listen to this topic or f enjoy further personalized discussion with the badgers on select topics consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honey badger radio before we get into the news items there are a couple things that i would like to shill one Skeptor, our favorite Israeli uh, YouTuber and men's rights advocate, is trying to get a film shown in Israel, The Red Pill specifically. He needs uh, funding to get it shown. So I'm, I put a link in the low bar uh, so that you can go and donate if you wish. Um, they're looking for 10000 the, the 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 money is just to get a screening. Apparently, the way things work in Israel are a little bit different than the way they work here. Um, according to what it says here, uh, bringing the most controversial and talked about documentary in 2016 to Israel, a film about the journey of a young feminist. I know you know the story, Cassie J, who stumbled upon the men's rights movement and decided to make a documentary. The film explores the social clash between feminism and the MRM and Cassie's personal journey. In her video diary, where she becomes torn as her long-held beliefs come under question and begin to shatter. The funds will only serve for the screening and will only be used to have a screening if the goal is met. We have contacted all the parties involved, including the production, the subtitling company, and a couple of venues in Tel Aviv. Everything is ready. All we need now are the funds to make this happen. So, um, if you can donate whatever you are able, please do. So uh, I think that this film is extremely important and we and everyone needs to see it as many eyes as we can get on it. If you can't, then at least do us a favor and share the link. I put it in the low bar. Try to get people talking about it and uh, see if we can't meet that goal. I think it's completely doable, um, but not without your help. So first off, there's that. So the red pill in Israel. We want to show it as, in as many places as possible. All right, the other shill I want to show... This is a little bit more personal, okay? A father needs help to keep his son. There is a 40-year-old father of a great 10-year-old boy who is going to lose his child in a case. Um, I'll go through a little bit of what he wrote, okay? From the very beginning, my boy's in maternal grandfather has played a huge role in his life, from babysitting to helping raise him, all while I was working full-time, going to classes, and coming home to change diapers and take care of the little one. The bond we created is one I would not trade for the world. I'm not sure what happened with my wife, but after my son was born, she seemed to pull away from the both of us. She cheated multiple times. I found out she was taking my three-year-old son to the houses of men that she was cheating with, at which point we had an argument and it led to me being kicked out. I'm not perfect and this relationship was anything but, but I want to keep my family together, if for no other reason than to bring my son up in an environment that would benefit him. 
I couldn't take it after that though. Soon after, we separated and a year later started the divorce process. Since the divorce, my wife has periodically denied me the right to see my son. As far as I know, she denied me the right simply to hurt my feelings, as she is rarely provided a reason. She also never allowed me to have my son during the summer months, of which I am supposed to get 30 days with him. My wife is attempting to get full custody and deny me the right to even see my son. I have called the police to help me get my son on days that I'm supposed to have him, but they refuse to do anything and tell me to talk to my lawyer. So I've, come, I've called an attorney to get help. They need $2,200 to even get started and the cost would be significantly more. Now I live in a small town and my current job pays about $16 an hour with about $35 a week. This cost is more than I can afford. This is one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do, which is ask for help for complete strangers. But I must. Anything for my son. And uh, this is the uh, GoFundMe. If you can help him, he's at $300 of his $3,000 goal. Whatever you can do. But again, uh, I will put a link in the low bar for this. It's uh, www.gofundme.com forward slash father hyphen in hyphen peril. But I'll put the link in the low bar as well. Do whatever you can and also, if at all possible, uh, if you can't do anything or even if you can, try sharing it around on uh, social media or wherever you think um, this guy could benefit. So uh, those are the two things I wanted to, to shill. And um, I, I hope that everything works out with this guy, um, that you get the funding you need so that because you deserve to um, be involved with your son's life. So we'll hope that this works out. All right, so let's get into the stories. Max, you would do so, the honors of give, telling us about Ohio State University. Yeah, so sorry, guys, just bear with us. We just have one more story to get through before we uh, get to some of the more lighthearted material. I mean, that's relative, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, yesterday, an 18-year-old uh, Somali refugee named Abdul Razak Aliartan attacked fellow students at Ohio State University. Reports are saying that Artan... I don't know how to pronounce it, drove his car into a group of people and then proceeded to exit the car to try and stab others with a knife. Eleven people were hospitalized as a result, but thankfully there have been no deaths with the exception of R10. An Ohio police officer shot R10 after he disobeyed multiple orders to stop all action. In total, R10's rampage lasted less than two minutes. Now, shortly before committing this uh, rampage, R10 made a Facebook post urging America, quote, to stop interfering with other countries, especially with the Muslim people. Artan said that until this happened, quote, by Allah, we will not let you sleep. You will not celebrate or enjoy any holiday. It's following the incident, Ohio State President Dr. Michael V. Drake said that people shouldn't jump to conclusions when he was asked if the incident was terror related. Now, oddly enough, this is a sentiment that I believe we should all embrace in respect to this incident, but not because Artan was a Muslim. Rather, is a sentiment that should be embraced by people, by people like Senator Tim Kaine. Believe it or not, two hours following the incident, the almost vice president tweeted the following. Deeply saddened by the senseless act of gun violence at Ohio State this morning. Gun violence. <laughs> yeah. Gun violence. Those, when those, the attack was committed. What? Those, those automatic vehicles, you know. They, they, yeah. uh, we got we to do something uh, I mean, to like, control that. No, 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 guys. It's like I said in the... So like I said in the chat, it was the SJW 2016 model double think action revolving gun blade. <laughs> Get it right. I mean, if you think of it in terms of metaphors, it's kind of like a silver bullet. I mean, yeah. if you go fast enough. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, the attack was committed with a car and a knife, and the guy was stopped with the gun. Now say what you want about Mike Pence and his ideologies, but don't tell me that Kane is any better. Now, of course, more when more details come out, we'll update you further. Anyways, that's it. Uh... Oh, right. uh, mm -hmm. one other thing. In case people are wondering how uh, Hannah is doing, she lives in Dayton, not Columbus. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually had a few people inquire about that. And um, I'm miles and miles away and, and was asleep when it happened, as probably were a number of uh, OSU students, not necessarily miles and miles away, but asleep. Because if they have evening classes instead of morning classes and night jobs, they wouldn't be up at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, um, one of the it's, tragedies it's, of all this is they is they, they is they don't get the slackers, they get the nerds, the people who actually go into class. Yeah, they they got people most likely got the cal calculus and chemistry students. 
Yeah, thankfully, my one of my best friends, he actually goes to OSU, and he happened to be sleeping through the entire thing, so I'm very grateful for that, but I was very worried. Well, and I was glad to hear that none of the students died. Um, it's really, really awful to get hit by a car, uh, and I, I, I wish I didn't know how bad it was, uh, but unfortunately, um, I've, I've actually got a family member who's been through that, so... I, my heart does go out to the students that were injured. My heart goes out to the people that were there uh, in the midst of that terror attack because that had to be absolutely terrifying. But um, but yeah, um, for for the people who did ask, I'm you know nowhere near Columbus. Uh, I may be closer than you are, but still not that close. And and it's really the the people that were there that that um, really deserve your sympathy and. Uh, like I said, I hope they are okay and, and, and have a full recovery from the injuries they did sustain. So I know there was at least one head injury, which can be pretty bad. Yeah, and one other thing I forgot to include in the summary, um, as you'll see on screen right now, a picture of the attacker. Um, that was a picture that was taken, I, could, I might get this wrong, but I think it was taken by somebody who uh, works for the school newspaper. And uh, it was sort of like a Humans of New York thing, but it was for humans of... Uh, I, I'm, of I'm missing out the details. Or... Of the college or something like that. But the whole point is they wanted to do a profile on him because he's Muslim and he's worried about the fact that people are uh, mis-stereotyping Muslims. Well, sorry, mister You know, mis... Uh, you know, misrepresenting or misrepresenting them. Misrepresenting them, yeah. yeah. And he, he didn't do a very good job of... Yeah. Um, breaking the stereotype did he mm. yeah yeah i mean that was my first thought was you know he he said that um i wanted to pray in the open but i was scared with everything going on in the media i'm a muslim and it's not what the media portrays me to be if people look at me i'm a muslim praying i don't know what they're going to think or what's going to happen so without and i'm not trying to make light of this or make fun of the guy or anything but i think to say well you know i don't like the way i'm being portrayed by the media and i'm scared because and i'm guessing if he's afraid it's probably got more to do with the narratives that are being thrown around rather than his actual lived experiences but that's i'm, I'm just guessing that because i know the media is one one thing they're really good at doing is fear mongering and they do it a lot and they don't necessarily um, when you look at uh, a lot of mainstream media, they don't necessarily put up a lot of anti or anti-Islam, uh, you know, propaganda up generally. But it, but what they do is they 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 try to paint a picture that America as a country has a problem with with uh, you know Muslims and and like a really uh, a really big one, especially now that. Trump has been uh, made the president-elect. Basically, if you look at the literal shakening that's been going on online, there are a lot of people who, you know, supposedly either are Muslims or have Muslim friends, and they're telling these crazy stories that are not uh, completely unfounded of hate crimes against them and so on. So I think you're kind of, it fuels the fire, you know. And the way that he decides to respond is, well, you know, I don't like the fact that they're stereotyping us all as terrorists, so I know what I'm going to do to continue this conversation is I'm going to take a car and drive it into a crowd of people and then try to stab as many as I can with a knife. Then they'll see that the stereotype is unfounded. <laughs> so, not again, not trying to make light of it, but it seems a really ridiculous thing to do. Um, so, I I'm glad that nobody was killed. Uh, and... Um, Kane is an idiot because he well he maybe he didn't wait to see what the, what the facts that came out but it's still going off a bit half cocked although interesting that he assumed it was a shooting um, so yeah I mean th th that's all I got about that funny funny to say that <laughs> a gun grabber went off half half cocked <laughs> 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 but um, I want to point something else out too uh, and I, I I hate to say this this way but being Muslim is not an excuse for being uninformed or being stupid. Mm -hmm. We who are not Muslim are not supposed to judge the entire religion by the actions of terrorists. We are told over and over again that being Muslim does not make someone a terrorist and we are not supposed to judge the, the entire religion and enti the entire population by by the the actions of those few among them 
even though those few are rather large in number, if they're, they're still a small percentage of the entire Muslim population, okay, we can do that. We cannot judge an entire population by a small percentage of that population. But we can still acknowledge that those actions take place, and we can still take measures to protect ourselves from those actions, and we can still make an effort to separate the terrorist from the average Muslim. And, and that is, you know, that's the main thing that has been advocated in the United States. You know, the, the, the idea that there be vetting before we simply accept that everybody who comes to the United States from a foreign country claiming to be a Muslim refugee actually is one. On the other hand, here we have this guy who has said all these things about his fears that he's going to be attacked for being a Muslim. And I would challenge you to show one news story about one bombing where here in the United States somebody who is opposed to Islam has, has blown up a, a mosque or gone to some other function, some other Muslim got, gathering and attacked them, driven a car into a crowd of Muslims and started stabbing them because they're Muslims. You know, we're not allowed to lump all Muslims together, and that's reasonable, but it's rather stupid to claim to be afraid of all non-Muslims in the United States and to claim to be afraid that you're going to be attacked if you can't even point to a news story that shows that somebody did that. Yeah, and um, uh, the the uh, what what did you say on his Facebook? It is urging America to stop interfering with other countries, especially with the Muslim people, which which is very telling as to it's 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 impossible to comply with. Well, to stop interfering with other countries, especially the Muslim people, do you mean block off trade and close the borders? Mm. Do you mean don't let any Muslim people into the because that is interfering with a country? to order another million of its citizens to be placed in your country. <clears throat> what it mean well yeah, what it means is interfere in countries in ways I want, but not in ways you want, and I'm not even gonna tell you what those ways are. And it's gonna be hilarious watching the mainstream media try to blame this on Trump. Because if anything, he wants to stop interfering with other countries in the you know, in the way Hillary most definitely would have pursued. But uh, Yeah, I think that I, no, I think that's right. I think the media is... I'm waiting in before a few things. One, the media does try to make this about Trump because he did... He, he's making an emotional... Well, he made an emotional argument to justify trying to kill God knows how many people. Like 11 people were injured by, by this incident um, when he tried to drive his truck of peace into the, uh, into the school. And then the people he stabbed afterwards. Uh, and no, no amount of, of fear that of, from stereotyping in the media could possibly justify that as a reaction. However, I am expecting the media to try to use it to say, "Look, they're being radicalized by the fact that the president is, you know, that we've elected this man." Because there, there is that argument too, right? Like if we, if you do that, you'll radicalize them, and then they'll be terrorists. But they can't be terrorists because that's not in their nature. Except they can be if you radicalize them. And uh, also in before conversations about toxic masculinity, uh, about race, because they've, some people have already made it about race, um, because the cop had to kill this man, and he, uh, you know, when you look at him, you say, oh, he's black, you know, he's, um, so the, 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 all of that's going to come out, and none of the actual shit is going to get addressed. All right, I have a major challenge for feminists that might be listening to this show right here and now. Because feminists always say that toxic masculinity is, they always claim it's not cl calling masculinity toxic, it's, it's calling the pressures that are placed on men to be masculine toxic. Well, if that's the case, the ultimate in toxic masculinity is society's treatment of men as disposable. And I don't think there's a society that could arguably be said to, to consider men more disposable than the society that teaches them to suicide bomb. You know, that's that's pretty disposable, especially when some of the men that are sent in aren't men, they're boys. And yeah, there's a few women here and there that do it. 
but it's almost entirely men and boys. It's almost entirely men and boys that are sent in to fight, and and quite often with uh, you know subpar weaponry. This 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 thing with ISIS is actually pretty rare. Um, mostly, what's been encountered when West meets Middle East in terms of war is they're an age behind us in military and weaponry, and they're still sending thousands to hundreds of thousands of men in to fight and die. Male disposability. So if you want to get rid of things like this, if you want to stop things like this, and you want to use the term toxic masculinity to make it stop, then start opposing the treatment of men as second-class citizens. Stop treating them like they're disposable. Stop treating them like their interests don't matter. And stop treating them like their lives don't matter. All right. Well, thank you, Hannah. Uh, let's move on to the next story. So, Max, this was you again. Uh, Sir. Okay. Go ahead. Something a little bit more lighthearted, ladies and gentlemen. So, Victoria Corin Mitchell of The Guardian wrote an article last Sunday titled, I'm not joking, Manxiety Needs Fempathy. Anxiety yeah. needs empathy in defense of mansplaining. In response to Sweden's largest trade union setting up a quote unquote mansplaining hotline. Now, for those of you who don't know what mansplaining is, I don't imagine anybody who listens to the show doesn't know what it is, but just I'll allow the author of this article to define it in her own words, just in case. Mansplaining is when a male explains something to a female in unnecessary detail often a female who understands it better than he does. Now, while the article does suggest that mansplaining is a legitimate concept, we must give Mitchell credit for condemning the existence of a mansplaining hotline in her article, as well as noting that, oddly enough, the majority of calls on the hotline are coming from men who don't want to be condemned for the act. It's like to, you so, know. So that's a bridge too far. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, that the, the hotline. Okay. It's, yeah, it's the, it's, the shame, it's the shaming of men by other women and how effective it is. Anyways, she also rolls her eyes at the fact that the very idea that there are people putting the issue of mansplaining over all the other core issues affecting the world today. But her reasoning behind why we shouldn't focus on the concept of mansplaining is highly questionable. Allow me to quote one interesting line. The truth is, I don't think mansplaining is even sexist. I don't think men reserve a patronizing tone for women alone. It's just how they talk. Now, the line can be read in a way that suggests that men talk with a certain tone that only sounds condescending, but is in no way antagonistic. You know, I, I've, that's something I've experienced a lot personally in my lifetime. It can also be read to suggest that men naturally have a condescending tone. We don't know. The article serves as a welcome attempt by a Guardian journalist to look at a gender-related subject from multiple angles. And, you know, when you consider people like Jessica Valenti, it's a pretty big achievement but the structure and wording of the arguments gives a final feeling of innocuousness at least that's how i interpreted it anybody else want to comment on it i i take a little bit of issue with the definition that they're using now for mansplaining because when the term was first introduced at least the first time i heard it and almost every time i've heard it since then it's usually used to delegitimize a man's disagreement with an, uh, an accusation of intent that a woman has made against him due to her own response to behavior that she may be misinterpreting. Um, things like, you, you only said that because I'm a woman, you know, or um, you think my butt looks big in these pants. Or, or you think my ass is fat because you said my butt looks big in these pants. You know, where a, a man is not allowed to actually have his own perspective, he's not allowed to have his own definitions and, and uh, determination for his own intentions and his own meaning behind what he has said or done. He has to like adopt what the woman's reaction is to him instead and, and wear it like some sort of a mask over his real self in order to please her. And that's the, the term mansplaining has been used to dismiss men over and over again when they have said, no, I'm not calling you fat. You know, the, those are bad pants. Or, you know, no, I didn't say that because you were a woman. 
You know, I've, I've said that because of this logical reason that you're ignoring. And as far as I'm concerned, it's not a legitimate concept because it's essentially a claim by the women using it that they are intellectually and emotionally superior to men and have the right to dictate what men should think and do and say. It's, that's my whole take on mansplaining. And as far as the whole patronizing thing, sharing information with people is not patronizing. It's not patronizing even if they already know the information. If somebody says something and you already know it, say, oh yeah, I know all about that, and blah, blah, blah. You don't sit there and get PO'd because somebody doesn't know what you do or don't know. And I, this is something. Hand, hand. Oh my God! I used to <laughs> deal with this all the time when I worked at I worked at a gas station for six years, and I worked with mostly women because, um, well, to be honest, men don't usually go for cashier jobs in gas stations. They usually go for something a little more lucrative, and so I worked with feminists, or well, I worked with feminists, but I worked with women, and I worked with very young men, and I worked with male managers. And it was just ridiculous how often girls would get butt hurt over being told how to do something that they were new on the job. The thing was specific to that job. It wasn't something that you would be expected to have encountered in your home life. And the person explaining to th it to them didn't know if they'd had any other retail job. you know, Or it was different with our cash registers than it was with the McDonald's cash registers, which have a similar running system. And so it, 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 they'd get upset about having something explained to them, and they'd sort of push the person away, you know, get out of my way, let me do this, I know what I'm doing. And then they'd mess it up because they didn't listen. And then they'd blame the manager for not explaining it properly. So this mansplaining shit, it's just, <laughs> it's just women and girls using an, an, an excuse uh, to, to not listen when men talk. Yep. Well, I think it's a little bit more nefarious than that, honestly. Like when, it, at least the way I see it, is that it's it's just a form of shutdown language, basically, where somebody's when say you're having a discussion, um, it's basically a way to shut people down without actually having to defend or address any of their critique or criticisms. Um, it's it's a way to lecture to people, um, you know. And obviously, we see it because it is it's a feminist idea. It's like, oh, you're mansplaining, therefore everything you say is invalid. I don't have to listen to you. And then you can just brush people off. And it's kind of disgusting because, you know, you don't, you can't, you can't basically in this day and age almost, it's nearly impossible in a lot of situations to have a conversation because people actually bring this up. I've had people bring these kind of things up like, oh, you're just mansplaining. And I'm like, so does that invalidate what I'm saying? Am I wrong? And they'll just they'll dance around the idea that that you know that anything I'm doing is correct. So it's just you create this. It's this toxic femininity <laughs> where they mm. where they you know they create this toxic situation where they don't think that your input matters and they are they are othering you. And it just you know and I forgot what I was going they, with that. No, so but, fuck me. <laughs> but on top of that, they, they can't actually make an argument. So instead, yeah. they dismiss it by yeah. saying you're mansplaining. Exactly, exactly. You know this whole so it I, destroys conversation is what it does essentially. Oh yeah, that's just, the point. and that doesn't that doesn't help anybody obviously. No. Actually, it's funny that the, the, this whole thing where where you're you know why are we talking about? I mean, I, I know that it's because it's this is so ridiculous because this term is actually appearing in like high levels of political office discussion like there right. was a, a politician uh, on a parliament board or something that said you know that accused the man of mansplaining to her and i was like you're you, yeah. you're fucking kidding me this is ridiculous um and then this article's title fempathy and it reminded me of um oh my uh Someone told like me an that, old school Russian punk rock. No, band. no, Sorry, it's it's like it's isn't there a Futurama episode where the there were the there was a feminist episode and they were all using femme and and yeah. like other like female stuff to change words and that right, was right. like the way they it that was <laughs> it was ridiculous. The point of it yeah. it was so absurd that you were supposed to laugh at how ridiculous it is. Now it's becoming real. Like the, the yeah, people are the, using the thing this. That I was 
mansplaining and manspreading and manslamming are are in the dictionary now. Remember when Francesca Ramsey said that? This is becoming real well, and, that, shit. and that's that was kind of the point I was getting at that I lost the point on the plot on, as it were. Is that this kind of thing is dangerous because yeah. it creates situations where you can other people and you can just completely dismiss them just out of hand, just fucking like a brushing them off your shoulder kind of thing. You know, it's just like nothing you say means anything because I use this word and you're done. It's over. Sit down and be lectured to and be told how to think and what to do and how to be. And that's, and that's dangerous because I guarantee you fucking women don't want the fucking this thing to happen to them. Feminists obviously don't want this sort of thing to happen to them. They would never let this happen to them. Mm-hmm. It's okay no, in because fact, men are lesser, you know, we're lesser species in their eyes, basically. Feminists have portrayed opposition to feminist initiatives as this happening to them for, mm-hmm. yeah. for a century. So, you know, it, it's not only would they not put up with it, um, they already know how to use accusations of it to get sympathy from people. Right. Men wouldn't put up with women being treated that way. They'll have to take it up with Victoria then, because she, I, I'm assuming, because uh, the way she's defending it, she probably has some sympathy with the feminist movement, and even she's dissenting to it, so take it up with her. Yeah, but they're it, starting to figure out how ridiculous it is, yeah, but yeah. not all of them, though. You'll still see, like, and this this is a great example of you know, the, the the rifts within feminist movement that can sort of be not necessarily exploited, but that can be useful in terms of arguing. Um, you know, we we point out regularly that there are aspects of feminism that are very clearly about hating men, and there are feminists out there that want to say feminism is not about hating men. Well, if they don't want to be considered man haters, then they shouldn't be using terms like mansplaining, and mm-hmm. and this is a an individual who could possibly be reached with that discussion yeah she's uh victoria's uh, uh she's a lot smarter than the average feminist to some degree she's actually a professional poker player so uh, she might be an evil genius and i think she's aware <laughs> of the irony in the fempathy thing almost certainly she married david mitchell as well the uh the famous comedian from the duo oh. so they're, they're they're sort of a celebrity couple and and you know they've got some cred between them and like I say, she, she's trying to build a bridge and doing it as well as she possibly, possibly can. The problem is she's building a bridge to crazy. We shouldn't yeah. be building bridges <laughs> to crazy. And, it, and you can see where it gets quite sinister when she says, men simply love explaining things. <clears throat> yeah, I've been sitting here trying to think of the difference between talking and explaining. And there, there's hardly any at all. I mean, why, why, would you, why does anyone put two words to or just say one word? Other than to explain something, to, to explain an the idea. system, or or or, or, an, or just a single entity, and so th- there's this Orwellian thing where they say, "Oh, um, j- women simply talk, and men explain." They have this explaining way of, of doing exactly the same thing that women do, and that's why it's okay to talk about mansplaining because men actually do talk in a slightly different way to women, and really the only uh, other alternative to talking in an explanatory way is a purely artistic way, a way that's not meant to sort of mean anything, or something that's meant to suspend you in a zen state or something. But yeah, what, 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 what but, um, Victoria but, says in the article is men simply love explaining things. That is what men want to do in conversation, make jokes and explain things. Have you ever what listened to there? a what couple of women? There, Victoria? That's everything. <laughs> have you ever listened to a couple of teenage girls on the phone with each other? <laughs> um... There's Let me gossip. tell you why this girl is such a bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah, exactly what you were describing. There's not very intellectual uh, discussion at all. And I, I suppose I can kind of understand why um, a lot of women don't understand the way men talk if that's what they're caught up in. Uh, not that I can sympathize with it or anything, but I, I can understand how that would make it difficult to see the value in intellectual discussion. Yeah. But um, but a hotline though, that is a bridge too far, and and not in towards crazy apparently. Um. So yeah, Victoria, <laughs> building bridges. Here's, here's the thing though. Here's here's another thing though. Real quick is that. It got to the point where they actually did this. I know. They made a hotline. I know. That's what I'm talking okay. about. What there the hell is, is a hotline supposed to accomplish what? exactly? Yeah. 
at what point during that process did did everybody just go to fucking dipshit Bizarro Town? I mean, seriously, we're talking about we're talking about you know. That's an actual town in Sweden. Yeah, you know, exactly. Have, have you ever? <laughs> you know what? Probably seemingly intelligent adults who made this decision, that mm. thought this was a good idea, that thought to fund this was a good idea, that thought the idea was valid, that it held merit enough to make it a reality. Well, Scott. we are in the fucking darkest timeline. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Well, Seriously. well, Scott. <laughs> allow me to to. Uh, Please uh, explain that uh, a little bit later in the show. You explain it to me. Yes, I'm going to mansplain to the men. Uh, a little bit later in the show, we're going to understand how adults manage to do this because apparently we are we are running short on adults. But we'll get to that part. Um, Can I? I just yeah. I want to figure out what the number for this is because I just want to call, pretend that I'm a woman, and say some guy told me my ass was fat, but in a complimentary way. And when yeah. he tried to explain. Man explained it to me. He said it was pH fat, not F fat. Oh, but you I mean get it, man? Pretty hot and tempting. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe pussy has ass hit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let us move on to the next story. Um, I will hand it over to Scott. You have the link. Do you have the oh, stuff God. up? Oh my, that's oh, me. Or, or, or don't you? If you don't, I'll do. I, it. No, I do. I do. Uh, right, which one is this? The, um... Keck be praised. Oh. Keck be praised. Praise be um, upon him. I'll pra yes, I'll praise be praise upon him. Praise be upon him. Almighty, all glorious, all knowing, all loving. Oh, the mainstream media has a long and proud tradition of not grasping the concept of shit posting. So when Journal and all around Normie. <laughs> Ego! <laughs> <go. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> magic most day. Bless you. He did what any other <laughs> aspiring journalist would do. He took it all literally. This isn't even the 2016 version of literally. Mr. Corpus actually believes that there exist members within the alt right that give praise and worship, <laughs> give praise, give praise to and worship an Egyptian Christ-like frog deity named Kek. <laughs> <laughs> Take a second to absorb that, if you will. Corpus first starts by repeating the lie <laughs> initially told by Hillary Clinton that Pepe the Frog is a symbol of white supremacy and the alt-right. He then proceeds to make leaps of lo leaps in logic that even evil Knievel would, <laughs> would shy away from. Most humorously, he links the alt-right's alleged anti-Semitism to the anti-Semitism found in ancient Egypt. His evidence of this, a humorous fan art of Pepe the Frog depicted as an Egyptian deity. <laughs> <laughs> Humor quickly turns to horror as you realize he's completely serious in his claims. It should be this type of fake news that the left should be trying to stamp out, but they won't as it fits right into their narrative. Despite numerous updates to the story, it's clear Corpus still doesn't se seem to get it. Ironically, the comments do a much better job explaining Keck and meme magic than this article could ever dream of. May Keck have mercy on all our souls. <sighs> That's amazing, because you know that all the Egyptians were for the Horde. <laughs> Everybody knows that, duh. People are in the comments oh clearing things up. Pepe is not Keck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Then what oh. is Keck, Brian? Oh, isn't he? Oh, isn't he? Why don't you stop mansplaining to us? Right. Chat. This is, is the chat. Really yes. Chat-splaining. Chat-splaining. <laughs> Hey, you know what the best part of this article was for me? Oh, man. It was this one quote from 4chan that this author took seriously. Like, absolutely included this in as a serious, you know, this is what these people really think. <laughs> Your usurper Semite demon Yahweh and its proto-communist spawn infuriated the gods of Egypt, including Kek. Including Keck, when their chosen Jusenites stole Egypt's magic to make Kabbalah and the standard or, and slandered the very reputation of Egypt herself in the false book of Exodus. What the fuck is a Jusenite? <laughs> that sounds like something you make your sword out of in Skyrim. Right? <laughs> this is a journalist who saw a comment on 4chan with Jusenite as a word in it. And took it seriously. Mm hmm. He probably <laughs> takes South Park seriously. <laughs> oh, seriously. 
<laughs> you know, it, it's like this is like the what was the the um you know I, I talk about the darkest timeline. That's another you know silly fucking internet joke, whatever if you want to call it. But like it's like the Baron Stain and the Baron Steen thing that fucking kicked up like a year or two ago or whatever the fuck it was. It's like we that's, like, that's still going like, on. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying though, it's a, it's a relatively new thing though. It's like a thing, but it's like. Every day when I see shit like this, I'm just like, you know what? They might have been onto something like that. <laughs> like, because I, I just, I just can't fathom. I can't fathom that people like this actually get jobs doing the things that they do, being as dumb as they are. I mean, it is, it is almost literally unfathomable to me. I just, I don't even get it. Yeah. I mean, please, somebody, please explain no, this to no, me. This, I just well, don't. This is what lazy reporting looks like. Uh, I, I love these comments. I want to read a couple of them. Uh, Hilbert Space underscore writes, You're really, really dumb and or bad at research <laughs> or easily fooled. Anyway, glad we've archived your stupidity forever and ever to laugh at. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has the archive links. <laughs> he gave him oh, the archive oh, you know links to his own that page. Too? You know, the, the National Archive the, uh, in D.C. actually, apparently they archive every tweet. Like, so even if Archive IS or, or whatever else goes away, our government is archiving all tweets all the time, every day, every second. Wow. So it will oh. never go away. God, how much? <laughs> There's like, that, does that oh, include, like, get, like, animated GIFs and shit, too? Well, that would, I think it includes everything. I mean, oh, okay. so basically you could be, like, you know, say, like, you could, like, do a FOA, a Freedom of Information Act fucking uh, request for information or something, probably, if you needed to, if you felt that strongly about finding out what somebody tweeted, you could probably find it out. That means that they, have, they have lots of porn, then. <laughs> a lot of porn. <laughs> but it also means the entire Keck offensive was, was uh, <laughs> archived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. There is a government archive of the trolling of Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love another comment. By Top Keck, when normies start clowning. <laughs> <laughs> normies, fucking normies. Uh, and then there was one other good one um, that I remember looking at early. Oh yeah, uh, this guy named Your Stu <laughs> You're Stupid. I'm pretty sure he made an account just so he can make a comment. Uh, this has to be the worst bait I've ever seen. If it isn't bait, Daquan must enjoy your wife a little too much. And <laughs> Top Keck. Comments under that says when you make an account just to comment on this cancer. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh man. Anyway. So yes. Uh, I'm glad uh, I made it back to the show in time for this. <laughs> yeah. Lols be upon him. Uh Keck, the anti, the, the alt rights anti Semitic hate god. I'm just, I can't even. All right, let's move on to the next story. We could come back to this if you guys want. I, I've had my laugh. Uh, no shave November. Remember, remember, no shaving November. As usual, no shave November has been deemed problematic. Let's take a look at some of the reasoning as to why that came out of feminist writers this year. Jessica Bansbach in a SUNY student newspaper complained that. Quote, society views the male body hair as natural, but the same cannot be said of women. When women join No Shave November, they are often met with disgust from the people in their lives, males and females alike. Whining about not being included is one thing, but here is a real doozy. Featured on the Sydney's Daily Telegraph this month, one critic wrote, quote, It's disappointing that what could have served as a much-needed dialogue about the many ways in which men, trans men included, can express their masculinity without resorting to chauvinist caricatures is in danger of devolving into, at best, a pissing contest between bros who can grow the most facial hair to prove their manliness and, at worst, an implicit endorsement of 1950s-style gender norms, complete with transphobia. I could not quite tell you what that means but it gets worse <laughs> matt ventresca has written an academic paper an academic paper guys about how november enables problematic understandings of gender and philanthropy while constraining the space for politicized discussions about health and masculinity the title is entitled mo bros masculinity irony and the rise of november 
If you want to educate yourself further on the problem of men growing out a beard to raise awareness about men's health issues like prostate cancer and male suicide, it's probably best that you try not to be sexist while you're doing it. Can it we just have this one thing? Oh, sorry, Matt, go ahead. <laughs> it, it occurred to me that men's beards are, might be a little bit like women's breasts. They're not actually uh, necessary for, for a... You know, it's not necessary for them to be that big for for their <laughs> biological function, but they're there as a peacocking thing. It's it's there to sort of indicate that this person is of age, uh, you know, because something uh, in puberty has turned on, so to speak. And and obviously, when when there's a big fuss about breast cancer, the feminist response is, "Oh, this is just because men objectify breasts." <laughs> And, you know, this is about prostate cancer, and unfortunately, the prostates aren't quite as sexy as, <laughs> as breath. You, you can't really, you know, it, it's difficult to, to pin a ribbon on a prostate. To, yeah, it doesn't sell very well. So we moved it up to, to the part of the body that's, in, at least in theory, as celebrated on a man as breasts are on a woman. And apparently that's sexist in the same direction. Who knew? <laughs> of, course. Right. of course. Of course. Everything is... Sexist and racist and whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. But I mean, like, seriously, though, can't we just have this one fucking thing? Can't we just have one fucking thing that feminists just leave the fuck alone? This is, like, along what Mike was saying, this is kind of a u uniquely male thing. It's in support of prostate cancer. This is not This is not one of those things that you put up for discussion. I think this is, I think it's pretty safe to say that along with like, you know, breast cancer awareness, this is something that should be outside of, you know, your feelings. This is this, because this isn't about you. This is about helping other people. This is about raising awareness. This is about the common good because prostate cancer, the awareness of that in men actually helps women because if a man doesn't die from prostate cancer, that might not break apart a family, a relationship, you know, it might save somebody from mourning and feeling like shit because they lost somebody that they love just like the same with breast cancer this is i, I just I, I can't understand why everything has to be politicized it has everything has to be turned into a into a you know a fucking a yardstick by which they can measure how much they're you know better than everybody else it's, it's like, a it's a wine it's fest ridiculous. it's a it wine really fest is. because like growing out your beard to make to to sort of draw attention to men's health prostate cancer mm -hmm. etc and so on you know, you like to to whine about the fact that you can't grow a beard, and then make that about where it's something about you. How is it we take we take trying to draw attention to men's health, and then these people come along and they make it about them somehow? Oh well, I can't mm -hmm. be included because if I let my if I let my leg hair grow out like a Sasquatch, or if I let my 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 woman beard come out, you know, and braid it like I'm a fucking dwarf from the Lord of the Rings. Um, somehow, oh, oh, it's bad because I might get judged, you know, and it's right. like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Who gives a shit? Grow your hair yeah. long or something, like, or just say, I support this. You don't have to, you know, be in, right. you can't do it. That's like, that's like, you know, a guy uh, that's like running for breast cancer awareness, which by the way, gets way more fucking money. Um, yeah. that, that's like them saying, I'm mad because I can't grow, you know, boobs or my man titties are just like nobody like cares about them you know and i put on all this weight and i ate all these cheesecakes and uh and, and it's just like Damn. i'm being judged because of my man titties um you know what's actually funny about that is um this is this is a long one but there's an article that feminists circulate around the internet that was written by paul elam that was a criticism of an article on Jezebel in which the writers all bragged about hitting their boyfriends and husbands and stuff. Mm. One, and then that, that criticism is, is like they'll ignore that it's uh, satire and they'll ignore the fact that it's basically a gender reverse of the, the article that's being criticized and that at the end of it he says it's wrong no matter which sex you're hitting to call it advocacy for beating women. Well in the article that he's criticizing one of the writers who talked about an instance in which she hit her male significant other hit her boyfriend for thinking he had breast cancer. So here we had a guy who was scared that he had a potentially terminal illness and she got mad and hit him for making breast cancer about him because he was a guy. Even though 
one in six breast cancer patients is a guy. And uh, I look at that, right, and men are not allowed any say in the breast cancer narrative. Men are not even allowed to ask for any consideration in the breast cancer narrative unless they're saying, no, this really deserves a lot of support. And if you can't support it for women, guys, think about the fact that it can happen to you too. You know, that's the only thing that they're allowed to say. They're not even allowed to criticize the charities that, that uh, take in lots and lots of money and then only give 10% of it to the actual research and the other 90% goes to their uh, administrative fees, meaning that the people running the charity are making shit tons of money, you know, by, by claiming to support breast cancer research and then not actually doing it. It's like men are not allowed to criticize any of that. The minute you have an organization that's raising money for a cancer that is predominantly male, feminists have been looking for years for a reason to criticize this and they finally hit on making it about the progressive stack you know it's not about the progressive stack it doesn't have anything to do with women it's not about trans women or trans men it's not about masculinity it's about cancer it's about it's humanity about coming up with a cure or coming up with better treatments so that people do not die from a particular type of cancer. And this particular type of cancer affects people who have the ability to grow facial hair because of their sex. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, not all men grow beards the same and not all men are able to grow facial hair. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that this is about raising awareness and raising money for treatments and, and a cure, research towards a cure, for prostate cancer and testicular cancer. And hell, half the initiatives for, for breast cancer are stupid shit that women do on Facebook that accomplishes nothing. It doesn't even raise money. It doesn't raise awareness. I don't. I, I challenge you to find ten people in your area in the United States that have never heard of breast cancer. Yep. You know, I, I'm sorry, but we don't need to raise awareness of breast cancer. We need to fund treatment and fund research for better treatment and better uh, chances at a cure. And it, to 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 try to tear down such an effort because it's not about you. There is nothing so self-centered, nothing so solipsistic, and nothing so stupid. This is probably the worst PR feminism could come up with, to attack this because it's not about them. Yep. And, and you know what? If we made, if they did a different thing, the, a different thing that men could participate in to raise awareness for Movember, that um, it didn't have to be about growing beards. If they chose another way to do it, Feminists would still find a way to complain about it if they didn't feel like it was it was catered to their needs to, to make them feel included when, you know, simply uh, being in favor of it and helping spread it and talk about it is more than enough. Also, I want to clarify that I I'm, I'm made a joke about breast cancer and I am aware that men can also get breast cancer. I wasn't ignoring that, although uh, typically when when you when people talk about breast cancer, in the greater conversation on the media and with the charities and everything, it's almost 100% directed at women who are victims of breast cancer. So even though there are there is such a thing as male victims of breast cancer or males that can catch it and, and men can get it, um, they ignore that. They focus on the fact that women get it. In fact, I would uh, it's it is the reason why breast cancer gets more money is because they they use the fact that it affects women more. So that's how I think that's one of the reasons why it gets this funding. Um, and I want to point something else out too. Yeah. You know, these people that are bitching could just as easily, if they're really upset about not feeling included in this, come up with their own initiative. Find a, a thing that they can do and they can participate in and raise money themselves and donate it to the same cause. Mm -hmm. You know, Sitting around bitching, if you, if you say somebody needs to do something about this, if this is a problem and somebody needs to do something about it, well, you're somebody. Do something yourself. Quit your bitching, get off your ass, come up with your own fundraiser, and raise money. That's what this is about. So do it. Otherwise, shut the fuck up and get out of the way.
because there are people who are doing something about the problem. Yeah, we, we, I'm going to call them men growing their own way. That's is a that, good one. Is that a good one? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> bro. And bro we'll bro. call it, we're going to, since <laughs> since they like to use the word bro a lot when they're uh, addressing men as a pejorative, we're going to call this Brovember from now on. Uh, there you go. Forget Movember. <laughs> um, so we'll see you guys next Brovember. See if you can grow your beard out, bruh. I hear there's lots of. Right. I actually I do hear there are ways that you know like there there supposedly are uh, ways that you can grow your beard even if you haven't been able to grow one in the past. So I think um, if that's a real thing, we should all grow beards either either on our face or on our legs or something. And then uh, next time we come back around next November or Brovember, we'll all turn on our cameras and show off our our glorious, luxurious dwarf Viking fucking um chinese beards whatever it is we got i'm gonna, I'm yeah, gonna bro do you even shave bro yeah you <laughs> uh you know what I, I would before that but the only place i can grow hair i don't think i can show on youtube so just saying on your butt uh sure let's go with that you can't grow a beard max uh no i know i'm just joking. are you just baby face beard. forever is that is that it you're just a... <laughs> uh yeah, kind of. You know, that's that's uh, that's a problem when your skin is all yellow. <laughs> yeah, no. I say it, it's yeah. I am not jaundiced, but it's not that simple. <laughs> all like right. Yellow keeps you from growing growing hair. Yeah, it, it's 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 a radiation problem. Why do you I'll have hair on your head then? That it's a toupee. It's a toupee. Oh. You caught me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it was. On, so this. I, I thought it was like a nesting dove. It's uh, a wonderful piece. I mean, I love it. Yeah, it looks sure great. Like it's drawn on. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, we, we all have drawn on things because we're drawn. Uh... Oh, <laughs> yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm a cartoon, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and all this time, I thought you were an actual Canadian. God damn, <laughs> Canadians are cartoon, Scott. Did, <laughs> did you I not know that? Be so socially polite. Yeah, freaks in that regard. With their floppy heads. I'll race heads. you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shatner Steelers. Okay, go ahead. I think we've gone a little bit into the weeds. Um, yeah, a little bit. So, last story, Scott. Uh, tell us about oh, the adulting the school adulting. for for gifted youngsters. Uh, move, <laughs> eat your heart out, Professor X. Man, this is something, isn't it? Oh my god. The word adulting, meaning to behave like an adult, has been popping up around the internet. With people posting their hashtag adulting tasks on Twitter, it becomes clear that adulting is an accomplishment because it's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> a new business now hopes to help millennials get better at adulting. Known as the adulting school, the business aims to teach young people how to handle budgeting, simple household management, and other functional skills. The adulting school casts blame off of prospecting students... Wait, yep, yeah, excuse me, prospecting students claiming you're smart and capable your education just didn't provide you with all the skills you need in a teaser on their website open in portland maine they've had one event with presentations on time management and budgeting complete with craft beer and free cupcakes ali jones a writer for the cut went on this first event and commented in her article that most goers were mostly white mostly wearing flannel shirts or printed scarves mostly 26 year old <laughs> And in a somber mood after the election. <laughs> this is a Poe, right? This is a No! Po. No! This is real, okay. bro. This is I'll real. I'll continue. I'll continue. This is real brosif. <laughs> Bromosexual. Apparently, there had been recent protests and candlelight vigils in Portland just days earlier. Some students showed up late to the, uh, to the time management presentation. <laughs> 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 lost on many writers criticizing the unfortunateness of the need for such a business. It seems to act as another band-aid put on softly by a doting mother instead of the challenge needed to encourage change and growth that comes from tough love without cupcakes and craft beer. <laughs> this is the end result of the ever everybody gets a trophy oh, childhood. It totally oh, it totally is. This, is. this is where we are today. This is this is what happens when everybody gets a trophy when they're when they're six or seven years old, and and they're they're taught that nobody can lose. 
and that they don't have to do anything. Have 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 you looked into this, Brian, to see if this is legit? Because this, God, this is just screaming Poe to me. No, dude, it's real. It's a real thing. Hold on. They're, they're not just wow. stuck in the nineties. They're stuck in a sort of Saved by the Bell world. <laughs> All right, you want to know why this is believable to me? I'm going to talk about the gas station again. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, when I was a new shift leader, shift leader is just basically a glorified cheerleader. Um, you, you don't have any authority, but you have all of the responsibility that goes with having authority that you don't have. And they expect you to train the newbies. I get, I get one in that she's, at, at that point in time, you know, she was barely 18 years old, just out of her parents' house. And I... Um, was explaining to her how to mop the floor and we had a mop bucket you know and it, it had a squeegee that that hinged over the bucket so you had the water in the mop bucket and you had the mop was one of those you know rag mops and you put it in the squeegee and wring it out and mop the floor and I was trying to explain to her that you know you want to change the water after so many feet because it's a gas station floor and there's slushies all over it and the water's just going to get it sticky if you you know and this is something that you do have to explain to most newbies at, at this but this one was particularly difficult she put the mop in the bucket and began moving it around like a vacuum cleaner i kid you not <laughs> then she didn't understand why the water wouldn't come out I got so fed up, and I got in trouble for this, I will be honest. I got so fed up that I told her she wasn't moving it fast enough, and the water would come out if she just moved it faster. <laughs> she did. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. <laughs> All over the floor. Oh, and I said, okay, now, the way you use the mop. <laughs> this, was, this was not the only thing she did, though. And I thought she was just, you know, fucking with me. I thought she was, like, trying to get out of the task by pre pretending to be stupid. Until I showed her the three-section sink and explained that, you know, only the sanitizing stuff goes in the sanitizer water. So you have to wash everything before it goes in there and everything. And that, that you want to change your rinse water periodically because, you know, you get dirt in it and so on. And she, so I had her start filling it up. And she couldn't figure out how to use the sink drain plug. It didn't occur to her that the part that looks like a cork, a rubber cork, goes down. And the part that looks like a handle that you can move goes up. And that the job of the sink drain plug was to fill the hole so the water wouldn't go down the hole. So when she put it in there upside down and it didn't work, she got frustrated. This is what... This is what we're dealing with in areas like retail with people who are raised with that everyone gets a trophy mentality. And it was considered to be too rough when I just said, well, just turn it over and stick the other end down inside. It's supposed to plug the hole so the water doesn't go through because I made her feel stupid when I said it that way. So, the fact that she needed to change how she was doing it was less important than how she felt about being told that she needed to change how she was doing it. And we're in an environment where at the management level, at a corporation with over a thousand stores, that was enforceable. That's mm. why we have millennials needing adulting classes. And I'm not sorry that I talked her into splashing the water all over herself. <laughs> no, you're my you know hero what? for that, Hannah. Yeah, that was pretty great. <laughs> you know what this this feels like, though, honestly? <clears throat> this feels like Anita Sarkeesian 2.0. This feels like feminist frequency. This this just feels like a fucking scam. I mean, I, nothing about this seems legitimate to me. Legit, legitimate, legitimate to me. God, words are hard. But but like, nothing about this seems real. This just this like this is this is we no. are living in this world right now. This is a thing. Uh, yeah, this no, is it real. is a thing. Like there are a lot of people who don't know how to adult. Adulting is a thing. Um, and I remember there was a hashtag that was going around. Where they were just talking about, you know, there were kids, I'm going to say kids, um, just for lack of a better term, 
that yeah. were essentially either talking about struggles they have with shit that adults are normally expected to do, like know how to read their electric bill, know how to, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, change a tire on their car, know, you know, know how to do stuff that, that, that previous generations had to learn at an early age is just like a part of survival. Know how to fix the pipes in your, uh, you know, under your sink without needing to call a plumber. Know how, yeah. just basic shit. And um, uh, there are a lot of uh, millennials that are apparently not getting that. And they're not getting it from, well, you have to think about it this way, too. Uh, how, hard, how high is our divorce rate right now? How many ch children are being raised by single moms who often don't have a lot of free time to teach them these sort of life uh, lessons? How coddled and um, uh, protected are, are, are the children of this generation, the young adults, when they were growing up, how much of a bubble they live in. What has academia done for them to prepare them for the actual real world other than teach them how to protest? None of these things well, are... What? Just real quick, another thing to think about too is that when you look at, when you look at our, uh, our society, our economy, it's based on service. It's mm -hmm. based on having other people do the things that you don't want to do for you. Oh, yeah. So the most menial task that people should know, like how to mop a floor, they don't get done because there's a service that does it for you. There's like, we don't make anything. We just do stuff for other people. That's our that's our economy. It's like, and it's like, we've gotten to the point where, you know, <laughs> I mean, shit, within the next couple of years, I'm sure we're going to have, you know, people that are paid to wipe other people's asses, you know, just like old school, like when Kings had a, a, a you know, a, a, a court ass wiper. So, you know. Well... That's technically one of the jobs you have if you're a state-tested nurse's aide, but that's because well, okay. those there are you people that you're, that you're taking care of are actually incapable of doing it themselves right, right. for other reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, that's that's gonna. I, I'll look. If we've got an adulting school, I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna come up with that. They're gonna well, be like, hmm. You know what? I bet people would pay to have this done. For oh them. no, <laughs> I, I I don't. I'll tell you what. I, I don't disagree I will tell with you that. Who goes to this adulting school? It is not. The kids who were raised by by parents that didn't give them everything, that that they didn't take mm -hmm. care of every little need, it is the kids who were upper middle class or upper class, who were in soccer clubs where, like I said, everybody gets a trophy, everybody gets a participation yeah. trophy, nobody wins the game, they don't keep score, you know, that kind of thing. It's not the kids whose parents had to struggle for things and and taught their kids the value of of money and the value of hard work those kids are going to be just fine it's it's the kids who whose parents decided that their kids should never have to struggle for anything right. and didn't think about the fact that at some point their kids were still going to have to move out of the house and have a place to live and have a budget and things like that that's that's who's going to be going to a school like this right the kids who live who grew up in poverty or who grew up in struggling households or households that were working class households and things like that the kids in in that group that are in this circumstance where they don't know how to do anything they are going to get the sink or swim treatment they are going to end up in a situation where they have to figure that shit out for themselves or they'll be in trouble and uh, and that's they'll swim. Most of them will swim, and a few of them will will not. Yeah, I, fi I figure I'd just say something very quickly. Is the youngest person on this panel? Although I don't know, like I don't know. It's I think Dr. Rand McCann's age, although he does look like a very youthful individual. Um, but I'll just say this: uh, it's as a 23-year-old, I'll admit that. Um, my upbringing, despite you know some of the problems that I've had, that I've dealt with uh, in regards to mental health and all that, I've had a pretty good. And thank God, my father and my mother were as disciplined and regimented as they were in telling me the importance of all these things. Because, you know, like for example, I worked at Costco uh, just as a summer job uh, off from school this past summer, and. My boss, he was almost, like, the way that he was uh, grateful for my performance on the job, it almost seemed like he'd been dealing with a lot of horror stories in the past in regards to people that are feeling this sense of entitlement. And, you know, just the very thought that, like, I'm look, looking at stories like this and I see how bad it's become. 
I, I can't just imagine that if I were ever in that particular state and I realized how much of a dick I was, just yeah, <laughs> how, how that would bear down on my conscience and my uh, my feeling of you know my my existence. You know what this does do for me though? There's there's I think there's a bright side to this. Honestly, okay. I I I feel like that. Like you know, if there's at the the rate we're going, I think it's almost an inevitability at this point. But I think there's going to be an apocalypse, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make it because <laughs> like in this, when I see shit like this, when I see shit like this, this tells me that there's a lot of inept motherfuckers out there, and I know that I can build the fuck out of things. I can fight, and I know how to you know I know how to do things. I have you know practical skills. I can fix shit. I can make stuff. So I think I'm gonna do okay. I feel pretty good about my chances all of a sudden. <laughs> That's not bad. So it's not a Poe. Uh, Max, were you still, were you, uh, did you need to say anything else? Just one last thing. Yeah. In the words of Tool, learn to swim. There yes. you go. <laughs> adult. That's it. First off, I don't like that people are using adulting. That's not a word. Stop making, stop trying to make that a thing. It's not going to be a thing. Um, adultery is a word, by the way. I can't believe I'm the first. Yeah, <laughs> I thought. Yeah, for, when I first read this, I thought it said adultery. It's like it's not that hard. The adultery, adultery school. school. <laughs> I'm kidding. Honey, I'm going to adultery school. No, you're not. It's the only school that rewards you for cheating. Um, so <laughs> this is a real thing, and uh, yeah, here's an actual quote from it. You're smart and capable. Your education just didn't provide you with all the skills you need. And there's also a quiz you can take to find out what your what your adulting IQ is. Should we have a look at that? Oh God, um, we Come can, on, we click can. Click on. All right, hold on. I just want to yeah. see health and wellness, financial bases, uh, make it, fix it, skills, relationships, and communication. Dude, Join the you know community. Um, just real quick, this is just yeah. a, a funny little story. Like uh, the financial thing. Like, all right, I was I was at a bank, right? I was at a bank d depositing a paycheck. And there was a girl in there with her dad, really fucking cute little punk girl, right? And fucking she was in there, and apparently, like, I was I, I was listening, but I wasn't listening, but apparently she had overdrawn her account, and her dad was in there to fix it for her, right? So she was kind of youngish. And this happened this happened probably about, like, 10 years ago or something like that, right? And this girl starts chatting me up while she's standing there with her dad. <laughs> and I'm standing there in line waiting to get in, you know, deposit my check. I ended up getting the girl's phone number, but I, and I ended up throwing it away because I'm like, dude, this girl's a fucking mess. But I was just like, this. The, when when you when when we started talking about this, I was like, holy shit! This is that girl is one of these people. She's one of these fucking retards that can't balance her checkbook. That thinks you know, it's like, well, it lets me write a check, so there must be money there. You know, it's just like, come the fuck on! It's like this is so dumb. This is so dumb. This is so fucking. Okay, dumb. so we're gonna do this. Let's. I hope it's not too long. Uh, okay, so what, what is your the, adulting IQ? Some of the questions are you know. Wait, wait, wait. Who's do, who's the subject? Oh, we'll we'll just we'll work together. We'll see how 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 a uh, honey badger radio adults. Oh no, I'm not giving you my fucking email address. <laughs> Fuck that, bro. Done. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's over. Oh, I can skip though. Financial okay. basics. Uh, I know how much money I have, and I and how to access it. Yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we should say no to everything. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything. How uh, could somebody just... not know that? Right. <laughs> I rock. Oh, well, apparently that girl didn't know. I mean, she knew how to give me her phone number, though, so that was cool. I rock basic budgeting. I hate the way these questions are framed. What? It's like what talking. Does that even mean? Oh, I rock basic budgeting. I think that's my jam. Uh, I'm so I mean, awesome at budgeting. A very awkward and failed humble brag. I rock. <laughs> 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 uh, just basic. You know, it doesn't matter if you rock it. That is the. What <laughs> aspect of budgeting is not basic? You have money, you you can spend it. If you don't have money, you can't spend it. Yeah, that's only the simple stuff. Yeah. Only for basic bitches is basic. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It, like you shouldn't use more credit than you can pay off later. Uh, there's nothing about that that's not basic. What's what's the next question there? Uh, what is uh, it? I'm great at knowing when I need to buy something and when I just want to buy it and probably you know should pass. This, this sounds like I know I know when I need to eat food because <laughs> yeah. my tummy tells me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, what's his name? Uh, the, the son of the cop from The Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, Ralph Wiggum. Yeah, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph Wiggum. <laughs> I'm helping. 
<laughs> my I friend wonder now. It's breast smells like kitty food. <laughs> I, I wonder now how many of these um how many of these people that took this class had to have the credit limit on their credit cards raised so they could pay for the class. <laughs> Oh, I wonder. I'm sure you got to pay for this, which is actually even oh, more. That's sad. hilarious. Yeah. It's referring to a sense of self-control. I, I'm. It's. I'm great at knowing when I. It's, it's, <laughs> I have a sense of self-control, but this is for people who don't know what that is. We need a one-syllable word for it. <laughs> I can't even think of one right now. But something. How about duh? Fit in their heads. <laughs> yeah. There yeah, you go. I've got a duh. <laughs> My mouth tastes like burning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I understand the important details of credit card, debit card, and loan officers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> loan, office, loan offers, rather. Um, okay, I know how to build a positive credit history. Like, These... that's the first thing that you actually have to take the time to learn and shouldn't be innate. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Where'd I get my Wookiee? I'm shocked. This is what my generation has come to be represented in. Yeah, that's right. Like that's out generation. of all of those, that's the first thing somebody else might have to teach a person. Oh my gosh! They I'm might crying, not be guys. able to look that information up themselves. I'm, right. I'm crying but at it's this. It's just common sense. I don't think you need to. Okay. Anyways, go on. I'm putting money into my emergency fund. This is so, and and like okay, we just looked at an article earlier that talked about how um like upsetting mansplaining is because it comes across as condescending and patronizing don't the same like don't you find this just like seriously i'm putting yeah. money into my emergency fund i mean come on that's oh. actually i kind of i i kind of don't like that one simply because for a large part of my adult life i was in a situation where there was no extra money to put in an emergency fund mm -hmm. yeah, right. pay the rent you pay the utility bills you buy food you know, you pay for gas to get to and from work, and there's nothing left. Somebody wrote in the comments, if you pay for this school, you have already failed at adulting. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Marco Johansson. Johnson, Can whatever. Can y'all boil water? Can y'all boil water? Can you even? Oh, do man. you even boil? Do you know how to make anything that doesn't come out of a box and get put in the microwave? I know how to chop oh, julienne, dice, or mince a veggie. I, I am comfortable following yeah, there's your there's recipes. There's there's I know Julianne. She lives down the street. Mike, what was that? There should only be one question, and it's, you don't just throw money at every single problem, do you? But they can't <laughs> ask that question, because, like we just yeah. said, they wouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, I am comfortable following recipes. I can whip up a meal with what's in my fridge. What if you're poor and there's nothing in your fridge? <laughs> I can comfortably... God, this is amazing. I can comfortably use herbs and spices to make my food yummy. Comfortably? Comfortably? Yummy. They, uh, yummy. They used yummy. <laughs> I'm comfortable with the amount of pepper in this egg. <laughs> <laughs> this parsley is sharp. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys like the pole cat because I do. Um, Holy elementary fix-it skills. I, I, I can't stop yeah. doing this because I want to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. Right? This is so, but the funny thing is, I can hang a like, picture on my wall. Right, dude, <laughs> the the language that they're using is so soft. I know. And, so and look, fucking, oh, it's so it's like, weak. It's like Dick oh and Jane. God. It's like Dick and Jane. It Big is, ass, dude. B small words, large type, yes or no questions. Um, yeah. Like nothing too complex. Just like I can hang a picture on my wall, <laughs> and then you're supposed to look and say, you know what? I think I can. Yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I Mostly wonder if there. Are, I wonder how many. I wonder how many articles there are that are talk about like the number of millennials who have died trying to hang a picture on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Millennial like, kills himself with chainsaw trying to hang a picture I got on the my wall. arm stuck in the hole. And <laughs> local local man dies in a <laughs> in odd picture frame hanging accident. Oh, I can unclog a drain. You know, you'd be surprised at how many people that don't know how to do that, but maybe not, considering what we're looking at. Maybe not. You know what's really yeah. sad is, Seriously. 
if they had difficulty with that, there's probably like hundreds of thousands of sites online that they can find that information. Yeah, now that we have the internet, how are people worse at doing shit? I have learned how to right. do shit because of the internet. Like life hacks are the best thing ever. You know, but somehow people are wor like every time I run into something I've never done before, I go on on YouTube and I just look up and there's like some handyman. It's usually a, a, a you know like a handyman guy who basically shows you how to do it very easily, and I've been able to do lots of stuff around the house that I've never even done yes. before. You know, so I, I well like, you go on YouTube and you can find the, this old house things on there all the yeah. time. It's like, yeah, it's great. You know, the only thing that bugs me is that there are <laughs> things that are are listed as life hacks that are ordinary everyday things that i really thought everybody knew like yeah. when you get a, a box of uh, saran wrap or you know whatever and it has those little thingies on the side those little tabs on the side that you push in to keep the roll from coming out of the box when you pull on the plastic there's a life hack to tell people to do that that that's what those are for and i, I thought okay well it says on the box to do that so that means most people don't read the instructions, and then they get frustrated when the roll comes out of the box when they pull in the plastic. You're right. Basic organizational skills. I file important papers in a safe place. They're going to get that confused <laughs> and think they have to keep their important papers in their safe space. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff is basically I neat and organized. <laughs> And I usually okay, put well, stuff away after I use it. I fail at the first part of that. <laughs> Brian, you got to read this all like Ralph Wiggum from now on, like every single one. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff is basically neat and organized, and I usually <laughs> put stuff away after I use it. Okay, so on number 17, I'm not an adult. Yeah. I'm, I'm a slob. You're not adulting. Admit, if it's not of vital importance, like, you know, a birth certificate or something like that, it's not neat and organized. I wonder how much does this cost? Oh my god, millions. Mil I hope so. I hope it's like millions of dollars. Um, <laughs> it's probably a few hundred. I'll yeah, bet you it's, I, yeah. it's yeah, probably not it five is. bucks. Yeah, no doubt. I'm Bernie pretty good. Madoff is laughing in his jail cell right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at going through my stuff every so often and getting rid of what I don't need anymore. Actually, I'm pretty bad about that. I, I'm a hoarder. Um, <laughs> I don't like throwing things away. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm your pretty first, bad about that too. Your first month is free if you join in December. <laughs> Take advantage, <laughs> first kids. month. Okay, <laughs> basic skills and scheduled car car for maintenance or scheduled for car. I know how to check a car's oil and how to tell when it needs an oil change. I learned how to do that when I was 14 years old, and it's probably yep. too late. Um, I know how to check the air pressure in a tire and add air as needed. God, I learned that when I was 14 years old too, if not earlier. I know how to put on a spare tire if I get a flat. <laughs> I wonder how many people answering these questions never learned how to drive, never took driver's ed, actually and have never owned a car because they live in the city. Yeah, it's funny that you should say that. Um, the article that I found this from, let me see, uh, I went to, this is the ar original article for the... Um, for the <laughs> adulting school. Yeah, I know. It's a girl sucking a thumb. The thumb in the and then mouth. I found this article that led me to the school itself from The Guardian. And the woman who wrote this, Eva Weissman, uh, she actually says, and this is her up here, the redhead. Um, she actually says, I've just turned 36 and still don't drive. I still can't drive. And though I often com contemplate learning, it's these wooden sticks that make me think it's too late. I don't know what that means. What? Uh, if only I'd listened to my mom when I was still young and narrow enough. I, I don't know what that means. But, she, yeah, so the person who wrote the article about this can't drive. So there's that. Uh, um, there you go. I, I get my car registered and inspected on time. Please, nobody know. does that. <laughs> That's no, a yeah, lie. Right. I don't know That's about that. Question. Uh, basic That's nutrition. Basic nutrition. I know approximately Speaking how of much expected. of each food group to eat each day. <laughs> oh, God. I God. know how to incorporate different foods to get a wide range of nutrients. Are you body shaming with these questions right now? <laughs> I limit junk food. I limit it. I did it all by I myself. I live in junk food. Oh, for crying out loud. Routine physical wellness. <laughs> you know, they can't even make up their mind what is and is not junk food. How are, how are these guys supposed to know what junk food is? 
I get all necessary annual medical exams. Uh, that's another okay, thing I don't now, think a lot of people don't do. <laughs> Most but, uh, people don't do that. Yeah. At least not the ones that are like. I can honestly say I get all of the medical exams I think are necessary. They're not necessarily the same ones the medical establishment says I have to have. have an insurance. <laughs> well, no, I just don't <laughs> think that they're necessary. Uh, I um, don't go to the doctor unless I get sick. Hmm. Uh, I get a dental exam and cleaning every six months. Okay, That's I'm just nice saying. I'm just going through and saying yes to everything, so I'm not <laughs> really it. trying. Essentials of mental health and wellness. Mental health. I meditate several times a week. Wait a minute. That's a that's a regular practice for people. Does daydreaming count? Does sleeping till noon count? I suppose. <laughs> Does getting high <laughs> as fuck count? Like I. Got... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have time to meditate. I'm a fucking adult. <laughs> yeah, right. Who's <laughs> doing this? My mind wanders when I go on long drives. That counts. I meditate. Click less. I'll click say, yes. I'll if click you drive less. anywhere, click yes. <laughs> you meditate when you drive. Overall, I'm kind to myself. <laughs> I'm a oh cutter. Oh my god, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody who binge drinks on the weekends and then complains about it the next day can check yes. Overall, I'm kind to myself. Because first, first they're hitting themselves over the head with a hammer repeatedly, and then they're calling themselves stupid for having done it, but they know they're going to go do it the next weekend. So that pretty much rules out like half the college population of the United States right there. <laughs> I exercise at least three times a week. A week. Does three masturbation count? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Three times a wank. Uh, well, haven't you seen that that uh, that shake weight thing? <laughs> yeah. If that's exercise, then so is whacking off. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Somebody's got a swole ass right arm. Uh, I. <laughs> I know relaxation skills and use them when I'm stressed. Deep breathing, muscle relaxation, etc. Relaxation. They left relaxation. out trolling relaxation. On relaxation. What the fuck was I saying? <laughs> they left out trolling feminists on Twitter. That's that's incomplete. Yes, yeah, skank on. No adult. No, no adult that actually has to do uh, adult shit all day long has a healthy relationship with substances. Right. <laughs> Wait, what's a, what's well, a healthy relationship on, with substances, though? I mean, what does it entail? It's like yeah, I was gonna say, it depends on what a healthy relationship smoking, is. Yeah. Eating. It's like, hey, you know what? I like doing this. That's a healthy relationship. There you go. Yeah, like I said about the binge drinking thing. If you have a beer every night, that's not unhealthy. If you save up all of your beers and have them on Friday, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> That no, I, I grew up in Ohio, so judge, I know Don't people that me. have two or three 12 packs on Friday. Jesus Christ. And don't get drunk. A happy relationship with substances. Yeah, in my healthy relationship with substances is I know how to use dish soap to get my dishes clean. There, there you go. It's a substance. It's true. <laughs> I mean, like, I I have only they didn't define substances. They've only just legalized recreational uh, weed in Maine, which I think is where this is. So, yeah, that's what presumably what you have to start calling it once it becomes legal. Yeah. I have a healthy relationship with substances. There's a hell of a lot of, not you know, not just functional weed users, but thriving weed users. <laughs> well, it's whether it's a healthy relationship or not depends on whether you do it sometimes or whether it's all you ever do. Yeah. Whether you get hurt because you're doing it or, or whether you relax because you're doing it. And there's a big difference. If you're getting hurt because you're doing it, then you probably shouldn't do it anymore. I'm very relaxed when I use it. I have a very healthy relationship with weed. Um, hey. uh, okay, so relationships and communication. We're almost at the end here. Uh, I'm able to communicate my emotions and needs clearly. This is something that probably gets to know more often than anything else. Uh, although I, I have no problem with it. I, that I don't know. The millennials are pretty good at communicating their emotions. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they don't have a problem with it. Well, to be able to communicate your needs clearly, though, you have to know the difference between a need and a want. So if they failed at knowing whether they wanted to buy something or whether they were buying something because they needed it, then they might fail at that question, too. Yeah. I know how to set good boundaries, express my limits, and say no when I need to. Rape apology! That's, that's rape apology! Rape apology. Ask any yeah. feminist, she'll tell you! Yeah, I was just about to say, like, this is a general question, right? I mean, like, what if you're a whore? 
<laughs> like then me. You don't, but, but then you never need to say no. When you're a or, whore, or you it, never need to apologize. Or is yeah, it a trick best. question? And you're supposed to say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because at this point, you've probably said yes to everything if you're a millennial. Oh, that's People know you've no idea how to be no. an adult. They're convinced you are one. <laughs> but then oh. would they be able to answer no to that question? Oh, God. What if this whole thing has been a ruse and we're, we're going to get to the end and hit enter and it's going to be like, wow. <laughs> sure, Nobody it's answers it. questions like this. It's the Kobayashi <laughs> Gambit. From Star Trek. Oh no no no! This is like the, this is like some fucking Scientology shit where we're being audited and they'd be like, oh, oh, oh and they'll fucking pull a fast one on us. Well, I didn't give them my email, so take that, Scientologists. <laughs> 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 You'll never take that email alive. Um, I know when to use which form of correspondence: text, phone call, etc. What? For example, I wouldn't what? wake up with somebody over a text. <laughs> that, just, that just means I'm not a coward. That's basically okay. what that is. I am sensing some butthurt in the person that wrote this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Captain. They're going to put this question in there because nobody should ever have that happen to him. Brad! <laughs> Captain, I'm sensing high levels of butthurt in this sector. Uh, okay. Career development. What other sector could it be? But <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> If I wanted to change careers or start a business, I'd know how to explore my options and get support. Okay. That's the... Alright. Feminist dance therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I can follow a resume template and know how to make my skills stand out. A resume template. A template! I got a... That's not... <gasps> Okay. Oh, those have been no, around no. for years. Yeah, I, got a I know. 4.0 kill death ratio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I feel confident in my job interviewing skills. I'm right. surprised they don't have on there knowing the difference between job related skills and stuff you like to do. Mm hmm. I should have said no to everything to find out how pathetic I am. <laughs> and I think this is the last question. I know how to use social media effectively in the job hunt. Yeah, I give them my email address, which is pussyhunter69 <laughs> at <laughs> gmail.com. <laughs> I hope somebody doesn't really have that. <laughs> They're going to get like a thousand emails from people. Oh, hey, one did answer you know? completing. I think it was the... Um. I, can't, I can't submit it because they want my email and I'm just like... Uh, no, make, email, email. Just make one up. Do it. Do a okay. do a hotmail.com email Say, address. Just put don't bother stupid at gmail.com. John at hotmail. Booty warrior. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're gonna email you your response. Well, then, booty warrior oh, no, at no, no. is going to get an email. <laughs> or you're, yeah, um, they're gonna email you okay. your uh, your results. No, no, they don't. Because actually, uh, spoiler alert, I did my own survey while you guys were doing one, and don't worry. I passed, so. <laughs> You've got your adulting pants on. You only Yay! call your parents for help sometimes. Let us be your go-to so that you'll only need to call them to say hi. So they're still telling me I should go, basically. Yeah, yeah. Even though I've said yes to everything. Like, literally, you, know you can't teach cost? me shit. Um, $15 a month for this service. $15 a month. $15 a month American U.S. dollars. So oh, it's right. not a class with a set... You know, it will be this long. We will teach you this set of things. You will be done by this amount of time. This is what you're going to be be tested on, and it costs this much for the class. It's a pay fifteen bucks a month. Fifteen dollars a month. Yes. Yeah, pay fifteen dollars a month, and whenever you have a stupid question, we'll help you find the answer. Even that drink in that oh, health boy. and wellness sector right there looks like it belongs a to a hipster. I know. Yeah, that's a scam. <laughs> like, what is that? Like a like it's like a fucking dragon fruit, fucking blueberry high with smoothie with a fucking grass shot in it of I don't think there's and... any food that is naturally the color of that beverage. <laughs> that's like some Willy Wonka shit. <laughs> right. Literally, shit. Yes. <laughs> All right. It pooped into the machine, and then the machine changed it to pink gunk. Which they dropped into the cup and sprinkled, I don't know, blueberries in? Yeah, it looks like I hope like those it. are blueberries. I don't know. There, there's probably some Akai in there and some fucking dragon fruit. and <laughs> Whatever it is, it's hipsters drink. These, like, new fruits they found. These fucking superfoods. 
The um, some estrogen pills for the extra minty flavor. Yes, you right. You have, to, you have to send in the night fruit to rescue the princess fruit from the dragon fruit. So, adulting, that's the thing now, uh, and there's a school for it. Um, how, how, conven how convenient. So, so what this means, Gen Xers who are listening, is if you don't want your kids to be taken in by a scam like this, start today. Teach them how a checkbook works and how their debit card works and how to deal with credit card companies and how to maintain their automobile and most of all, how to look shit up on the internet if they don't already know how to do it and find out without paying somebody 15 bucks a month to teach them. You know what? I believe the children are our future. If you, if you teach them well and let them lead the way, you know they'll, they'll show you the beauty they possess inside. They will. You just got to give them a chance. To make it easier. To make it easier, yeah. All right. Well, I've had enough music and stories for one day. It's time for me to move on, for us to move on. I will give yes. you guys a sneak peek of what we're going to look at. Um, this is a anonymous story. This is for the post uh the post special show. If you want to join this, you become a patron. Um, the according to the Guardian, had an anonymous person who they did not pay. They made it very clear they didn't uh, write this this op ed entitled "Alt Right Online Poison Nearly Turned Me Into a Racist." It started with Sam Harris, moved on to Milo Yiannopoulos, and almost led to full scale Islamophobia. It can happen to a lifelong liberal. It can also happen to anyone so um so, so is this just one of those situations where they're like they said or people are talking about is that, that's what this is basically right it's like this yes no name kind of ubiquitous catch-all for you know whatever the purpose that they're trying to push is it, it, it sounds like the rank and file uh tent revival testimonial yeah. i used to be a sinner yeah. I was taken Please. in by the demon alcohol. Yeah, no. Please, Jesus. Adulting. Fucking Christ. Apparently liberals can't be racist either. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Not that, you know, I mean, I haven't looked at the, the read the thing yet, but uh, um, it's not as if you can, <laughs> if you think that you could uh, have almost become a racist, there wasn't something already in there. That was waiting right. to be set free. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and this I'm was sure all from the outside. Awesome. I always became a racist. Whew. Yes. That was, that was well. They touched <laughs> me sure with their racist fingers. I'm sure this person was a real fingers. person, too. You know, like, not somebody writing about a made-up character that had made-up things happen to him. It's totally real, even though it's anonymous <laughs> and there's no evidence presented yeah, yeah. that any of this is real. It's totally real, guys. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Oh, this close and guys, that faggot conservative almost turned me into a racist Islamophobe. <laughs> Dodge that <laughs> bullet. Uh, woo. Okay. <laughs> well, let's get out, and uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side in the next poll cat cast. Thanks for joining us. Please leave a comment, and uh, let me thank my co-hosts Mike and Scott and Max and Hannah. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next show. All right.